Hi, my name is Noel Davis with World Composting, and I know it's been a long time since I've posted a video and talked about my worm bins, but I will get back into this at some point. But right now, what I want to talk to you is about biochar, or charcoal that has been biologically activated to be biochar, and how to create it at home. This is something that I've been looking up now for quite a while. I really have purchased a couple things to try to make this and get this working, and I finally got a chance to use it recently. And I want to show you the results of what I have from two of the other creators that I uh, watched online, which is Edible Acres and Live on What You Grow. So these are two channels that had talked about biochar and charcoal in general, and I took their ideas and I tried them out and they worked. So with that, let me show you what I tried and let me show you what the results are. And also, I'll tell you why I want to do this, not just for plants, but also because of the food waste that I have that actually I didn't really have a good way to get rid of. So with that, let's go take a look at these biochar capsules, or these charcoal, I should say, uh, creators, and go from there. All right, so here's the two different vessels that I have for creating biochar that are small scale. I'm not looking to make a lot of it because I just don't have the ability to, but these are really small, as you can see, compared to the size of my hand. This is the idea from Edible Acres here of using a stainless steel tray that you would find for, like, chafing dishes and things like that at, like, a you know, an all-you-can-eat buffet, and this is a homemade one that Live on What You Grow showed. Now, the first thing I do want to talk about is because I'm going to be working with dust here, I am going to go ahead and put on a mask. So I might sound a little bit muffled compared to normal, and because of the fact that um, I don't know how this will be, I am going to put on a glove here. And this is not a this is not one of my reusable gloves. I'm going to put on just a, you know, one of these plastic gloves. So first off. I have two trays here actually from Edible, using the Edible Acres method. And the reason why I really wanted to do something like this is because one, my yard, I feel needs something that's going to hold the nutrients into the soil. As I've been adding more and more compost, it just seems to run off. And I've been digging holes now and trying to add it to the soil itself, but I still feel I need something that can hold it in. The other reason is, is that this is one of my favorite foods here, which is peanuts and I like them when they're in the shell more so than when they've already been shelled. So these I've thrown in worm bins, they just never seem to break down and I've found them, I start throwing them out. So I wanted something I could do with these and I heard that you could do this with biochar. Now this one, this first one that I'm going to show you here, I'm going to move this to the center here. Uh, I had a mixture of the peanut shells and some pine shavings. And first off, let me show you the lid here. You can see on the back side of the lid, it's a little shiny in this area over here. And you can see that there was definitely smoke coming off and it was burning. But look at this material inside here. Look at this. Just breaks apart in your hands. This is not ash. This should be really good biochar. Now, as I said, I'm wearing a mask right now because you can see, look at my hands. Look how it's... it's very, very dusty in here because of this. So I'm not going to do a lot of this inside. I am inside right now, but as I said, I'm wearing a mask because, and this might be not even as fine. I have an N95 mask on. I probably should have a finer mask on to really be doing this, but it's the only mask I have available right now. Now that one was a mixture. This one was just all peanut shells. Again, same thing. Now I will say, just so everyone's aware, and I didn't record this because it's kind of hard to record fire. Uh, but this one was in a very, very hot fire to the point that really you can see the lid doesn't quite sit as well as this one does, I feel. I think this one, um, it was so hot, the first thing that happened is that this lid just popped open because this was a very, very hot fire. Whereas this one was just the campfire in my backyard. Still though, you can see there's some here that are maybe slightly under-processed, you know. But it still did a pretty good job. You know, you can still see. Look at that. Most of them are processed. There's a couple of them it looks like on this side that were not. This side, side looks like it was better processed. You know, this was done at the end of a fire. I just sort of threw these on top. This one though, this fire was a much larger fire when I, when I did that one, which is why you can also see here on the side, you can see it's very, got good coloring, a good pantina going, I guess they call it this one. Just a slight one on the side. Most of it looks fine. Now, this right here is very unique. This is actually a coffee can, and this is a Virginia peanut can that, um, because my son also likes peanuts, but he likes them to be shelled, and he also doesn't mind the, 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 the unshelled ones, but this was a little bit different. I'm going to use my other hand here. As I made this, so 
These are out of two cans. Let me see if I can get these apart now. There we go. Now this one, you can see this can goes on top of that. Uh, I'm just looking for a place to put this. Again, lots of dust. Now this one worked pretty well. You can see there's some wood that is definitely unprocessed maybe here at the end. But there's also some ash. It kind of opened up a little bit and burned on this top section here. But you can see, like this is pretty decent biochar, some of it. I mean, you can see it's, it's kind of crumbles apart. Has a, maybe is isn't quite as good structurally as some of the other stuff would be. It would have been nice if I had like super cooled it really quickly. But this is definitely some sort of coal. It's just trying to squeeze off into the can there so I'm not making a huge mess. But you can see it looks like it's fully broken down. Most of this kind of breaks apart pretty easily. Again, maybe a little bit at the end right here. Not quite. But you can see right there it just broke right apart. Again, breaks right apart. It's really hard to show that right there because of the... Uh, It'll then I'll show some color there. I mean, you can see some of the wood there, but as far as the grain, but this is a little bit tougher to break apart. It doesn't feel like it's quite fully done, but again, this is just a different type of vessel. And the way you do this, as you can see, this little ridging here, there's a tool here that I bought. It's this Jundrip, and it's a crimping tool. So if you move this little piece out of the way right here, it opens up and it's got multiple prongs and you just stick this in here and you just squeeze it down. And this was shown on Live on What You Grow and he was throwing these in his wood burning stove which would be a lot better solution. These are also these wood pieces, I hate to say it, were just slightly long so this container couldn't really close fully. Now I'll link down below to all these different items. Um, I would probably, I'll probably try this again maybe with uh, filling this with some pine shavings or something like that instead of this big wood. This is actually just chunks of wood from uh, that were kiln dried, as you can see here again on the bottom. Not quite done, and then it gets better and better as it gets higher up. And you can see it just, just does really come apart. I'd, I'd have to really smash this up, though. So you can see it's maybe, maybe a little further than that. So a couple inches weren't really complete. I mean, it should, wood, wood normally doesn't break across the grain like that very easily. So, so yeah, maybe... Maybe two to two and a half inches that weren't complete. But the rest of it was, and this looks pretty good too. Now the idea eventually is to break all this up, add it to my worm bins, and have it inoculated with the material from there. Now, you do have to worry about pH and different things like that, but that's something that I can take care of by adding other things, uh, such as you know crushed crab and eggshell, or if you need to up the pH or lower it, you can add different things to do that. So. I'm not really worried about pH in my bins. I tend to add things to, to do that. I'm not going to add also, like, I'm not going to add this entire container to one bin. I'm going to break it up into pieces. Or if I were to use the uh, the shells over here, again, break this up into, you know, pieces like that. And then you add a handful at a time. You don't just add it all at once, which is how I do a lot of things in my bins. I don't just add a whole ton of this material. I'd add little bits of it. So with that, I hope that gives you some idea of what I've been working on. I know it's taking me a while. I'll try to link to those videos, uh, Live What You Grow, or Live On What You Grow and Edible Acres to show these systems. And I'll link to the crimping tool and to these little little tins right here. This can though, these, just old, just food cans. So just make sure that they're steel cans. You don't want aluminum, aluminum will melt. At least I'm guessing these are steel steel cans, I think. Um, and you want, you want to make sure that they're pretty tough. So anyhow, that's what I've been working on. I'll hopefully get back into making some more videos here soon. And by the way, these also can be reused. These are not one-time purchases. As you can tell that these are, this still fits together. Could just throw this right back on the fire again after refilling it with uh, more peanut shells or wood or pine shavings and go from there. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, let me know. I did try these and you know, two of these went on the same fire. This one was the only one that, this was the only one right here that went on a separate fire that was a much hotter fire but uh so you do have to make sure it's not too hot otherwise it'll warp these or they'll, they'll kind of pop up and you know it'll just burn everything inside instead of uh turning it into charcoal so again thank you for watching if you have any questions leave a comment down below and let me know